Hey guys, my name is Ben and welcome back to episode 2 of how to make a bucket plugin. Um, first of all, we'll give, blah, before we begin, people mentioned in the uh, comment section let's log a thing, and uh, it's true what people have put. So instead of putting here, I've made it up, uh, first of all, I've already explained what I've done here. Um, today we're going to be doing about how to use players in the game, and we're actually going to be seeing like how to get a player or manipulate a player in the game. Uh, first of all, we're just going to be sending a player a message. Um, so that's what we're going to be to do. So I've made a new project, I've just copied and pasted my old project. Um, and I've renamed the, the class file to be called the PC Bros, just because that's what they're all going to be from now on. And, uh, yeah, so, uh, first of all, before we start, instead of saying logger logger equals logger dot get logger Minecraft, instead we're just going to put get uh, logger, like that, and then a semicolon, and that's all we have to do. It's actually a method that is from the bucket plugin, if you see here, uh, if we just type, if we actually just go back a bit, get logger, we'll see it's actually in Java plugin, so... It's a lot safer to use than the uh, log or get logger, which is getting it from Minecraft. So thank you for pointing that out in the comments. And uh, now we're going to begin. So what we're going to do uh, for this one is we're going to look at commands and players doing commands. And there is a method that we uh, use in Bucket to get to work out if a player has done a command. So we're gonna, well, I'm going to type it all out first. Uh, so what we can type is we type public boolean uh, on command. Uh, from here, you hit control space. Uh, oh no, we don't hit control space. If we, if we just go all the way back, we're going to start here. We're going to hit control space, and we're going to look down here. We're going to type on command, and you'll see this pops up. Double click it, and this all happens. We're going to delete this at override here. Uh, we're going to delete this to do line here, and we're going to delete this here. So everything is everything is going to be uh, deleted like that. So after that, you should have a little method that looks like this. It should have this red line underneath it. If you couldn't do that control space thing, you can always just type this out here. Okay, so what is a boolean? A boolean is another object variable type in Java which can only have two values, and that is true or false. So um, it's kind of the base of everything. So there are one and zero uh, within binary. We have true and false, and that is the data that a boolean stores. So whereas a string stores uh, like text, uh, an integer stores numbers, um, a boolean stores true or false so it's it's an on or off state kind of thing so uh, because we want to get rid of this red line because it's annoying uh, we're going to have to return a value uh, we see here that the method must return a boolean so if we just hover over that and type add return statement you'll see it's going to return us a false thing here uh, we can just move this all the way down so we can just ignore this um, like so so now we have all of these things in parentheses here, and I'm going to go through what each of these are. So command sender sender is who has sent the command. So this could be a player or like a console. Um, the command is the actual command that was issued. Uh, the string label, the label is the text that was issued in as the command, um, as the first command. So if I type it out here, so if someone in game has typed uh, slash msg um, bench cubed hello the the label is msg here and the string array and an array is like lots of strings in one variable so args or arguments is bench cubed and hello so the first argument in this string array will be bench cubed and the second one will be uh hello like so the sender will be um bench or whoever sent a message so if bench 3 sent a message to uh, this this did this command then bench 3 is the sender so and we don't have to worry too much about command now so first of all what we want to do is we want to make sure that um, the sender of the command is a player because what this command is going to do we're going to have this command do slash hello um, and then the command from there is going to then the server is going to say back to the player hello. Uh, okay, so first of all, we want to check if the command sender here is a player. So to type that, to do that, we type if. Now an if statement is just checking if something is true. <laughs> so it's quite self-explanatory. So we're typing if sender, which is this instance here. We want to check if it is a player. So to do that, we type instance of i n s t a n c e o f. So if the sender is an instance of player like so and then outside of this we can expand our brackets like so remember to make sure all of our cases are correct see sender here has a lowercase s so we have a lowercase s for sender here and player here has an uppercase p because it's the name of a class file 
that in general is how we you know name things class files will have an uppercase um will be all the uppercase uh, variables always start with um and objects always start with a lowercase uh, and then if they go into if they have more than one word in them so say we wanted this to be command sender command sender so sender of command say we wanted to rename this object to uh, sender of command in general we'd have sender in, and sender would have a lowercase s and then of would have uppercase f and so would command that is generally how we order around um, and how we by convention we use uh, variables and stuff and objects so if sender is an instance of player we'll see we have player has a red line underneath it because we have an imported player so hit import player that's going to import it up here in our import list at the top org.bucket.entity.player so it knows where to get player from so if sender is a player now we want to check if sender isn't a player so how do we invert this at the start of if we put an exclamation point and then we put everything else in brackets now generally in Java as a general rule of thumb you can say that the exclamation mark means opposite so if the sender is an instance of a player but we're doing the opposite of that so if the sender is not an instance of a player so in human words if the sender is not a player execute this code so we want to send the sender a message saying you can't do this unless you're a player so to do that we type sender dot send message and then in remember these uh, quotation marks because it's a string we type you must be a player to use this command like so and that's going to send the prayer message and we're going to say you can't use this command so now we want to cancel out this entire method this method is wrong because the wrong type of player has used it and to do that we type return oh return false so you'll see if we hover over return here um, or boolean even you'll see this return false uh, comes up so that means return what it does is it's returning a value so once we've returned a value any code after this is just invalid so say we returned first and then sent this message. You'll see this is red because uh, the code is unreachable. You're saying if the sender isn't a player, we just exit out of this method. This method just, you, you run out of it. So it, it stops essentially. Uh, but we want to send them a message first saying that they can't use the command and then stop out of it. So now we know that the sender must be a player because if they're not a player, this, this code won't run. So to do that, we're going to cast. This is called casting. This is safe casting because we are, we are definitely sure that the player is that the sender is a player. So I'm going to type it out. I'm going to do player with a capital P and then player with a lowercase p equals in brackets player space sender. So now what we've got is we've got this player um, object here. We definitely know that sender is a player. What we're doing here is we're casting one object to another. So sender here is of the type command sender, but we are now making a player object called player that we're getting from sender. So if we remove this here. It would say player player equals sender, but we can't do that. To make it, to force it to become a player type, we must put player in brackets first. And we are definitely sure that sender is a player because up here we have checked that player, that sender here is definitely a player. And if it's not, we just exit out the code and we send them a message saying, you must be a player to use this command. So now we definitely have a player as an object in our code. So now we can do lots of stuff with player. And you can see this from if we type player dot, and you'll see we have all of these methods that Bucket have supplied us with that we can do loads of stuff with. So if I just stop at any point here, you can set player's name, set no damage tick, set OP. Um, you can set all these things, set level, set all these things, set health. And um, we're just going to be looking at one of these today. Uh, and this is going to be sending the player a message. So if we type player, dot and then send message here so if we type send message message has a capital s and then in brackets and then we have to put a string in here so we're going to send a message saying something or other so you did the command now you're like ben what is the command <laughs> what is the command that they have done we're about to uh, define what the command is so if we go into um after this here after our at the start of our thing we want to check what our label is. So we're just going to be having one command and the player is going to do slash hello. And then this is going to say you did the command. So slash hello, we need to check if the label is hello. And because we've already used this if uh, function here, we are already aware of how the if syntax works. So this is how we check strings. So if we type if again, and then we type label dot equals now you'll see we have equals and also equals ignore case we're going to be using equals ignore case because equals ignore case 
as it suggests, ignores the case. We, it, they could type it in any which way with any which, you know, any which letter capitalized and it wouldn't matter. It essentially converts what they've typed into lowercase and checks what we type converted into lowercase. So if label dot equals ignore case, and then we're going to say uh, hello, uh, like so. And then we're going to put an open brace here and an open brace right at the bottom by the return false. And then we're going to hit control shift F to format everything up. So if the label uh, equals ignore case hello, then we're going to do the command here. And because hello, you must be a player to do hello, um, it's going to run the code as a player. Now, if the label does not equal hello, it's going to, we're going to be here. The code is going to say, is the label equal to hello? Nope. So it's going to go straight to here, but now we haven't returned anything and this method must return something. So at the very bottom, we're just going to type return false because, you know, the, the code has failed essentially. Uh, so we're just going to hit return false down here uh, because, no, it hasn't worked. So we've now, what we've got here is we've got our public boolean on command. So it returns a boolean and it takes all these parameters in it. So when a player fires a command, this gets run. So if the label equals hello, we're first of all going to check if the player is if the sender isn't a player. If the sender isn't a player, we're going to send that sender a message saying that you must be a player to use this command and cancel out of this this method. This method gets cancelled out of. After that, we know the player must be the sender must be a player. So we're casting the sender object to player. And we're sending this player a message saying you did the command. Now this message right now, it's a bit boring, it's a bit, you know, just white. So I'm gonna add a bit of colour to it. And the way we add colour in bucket is we use a class called chat colour. So if at the very front, outside of the blue, uh, outside of the, the quotation marks, we type chat color, uh, and then dot, you'll see we get all these chat colors come up. So we get lots of different colors. You can pick any color you want. I'm going to pick aqua. Now, this is going to import chat color uh, if you do it like I did. Otherwise, if you just type um, chat color dot and then aqua, it's not going to import chat color. So we have to hover over chat color and hit import, pardon me. Uh, and you'll see this will import it up at the top here. It's nice. So. Now you'll see we have a bit of an issue again, and like we did in the first tutorial, we're going to concatenate our objects together. So we're going to put a plus sign to add those two together. So it's going to put our aqua chat color, and it's going to say you did the command. Um, I guess what we can also do is we can also get the name of the player. So instead of putting this exclamation mark, I'm going to put a space. I'm going to add another concatenation symbol, and I'm going to say player dot get name, like so. So it's going to say you did the command and then the player's name. And then why not, let's put a little a cheeky exclamation mark at the end, like so. And then we return false again because it's, or actually we're gonna return true here uh, because we've, you know, we've done the command we intended to. Okay, so now what we have to do is we have to make a, uh, we have to define this command. So currently this command doesn't actually exist within bucket. So if you did slash alert, we'd just say this is an unknown command. So to do this, we must go into our plugin.yml that we have nicely created, and we have to define that this is the command we want. So we do this by typing commands, and then a colon, uh, then we hit enter, hit space twice, and we type the name of the command. So the name of our command is hello. Uh, hit a semicolon, not semicolon, a colon again. Uh, hit enter, uh, hit another two spaces, and then type description. Now, this is where if you type slash help, all the list of commands come up, and then next to it, each one has a description. Um, and in here, we're going to type, um, I don't know. Also, I need to change the name of my package here because this isn't the name of my class anymore. So the VC Bros is the name of my class file. And I'm going to call this player message plugin, like so. I'm going to make it all one word just to make it easier. So the description is going to be sends the player a beautiful, be a beautiful message with many colors <laughs> with many colors smiley face like so <laughs> so this is defining our command and then generally I just hit enter at the end so I add a blank line at the end so now we can close that we can right click refresh our project or hit F5 and now we have this nice plugin beautiful plugin so what we're going to do is we're going to export this plugin like so so again Java jar file next make sure everything's selected going to browse, I'm going to just call it tutorial plugin, I'm going to finish, and I'm going to load up my server and I'll see you guys in the game.
Okay, so we're back in the game. It's many lag. Right, so if we do slash help here, uh, you'll see we have this slash hello here. It says the sends player a message with and then <laughs> carries on. Uh, I don't know if we can do slash help hello. <laughs> Does that? There we go. So if we do slash help hello, it says sends the player a beautiful message with many colors. So that's the description that we put in our uh, plugin.yml here. Let me make colors my face. So now if we do slash pl as well, you'll see we have our player message plugin in. And finally, the big reveal slash hello. It says you did the command bench cubed. So this is a very basic tutorial on how to make a very basic command and using players with uh, the commands. So yeah, thanks for watching guys and I'll see you next time.